Time to hit and run, and the White Sox were doing a lot of good on Wednesday. They have been in first place, get this, for 11 days this season. Dan. April 20th was the last time they were. And wow. we listen to Dira all the time say talent wins out over 162. Do you agree with that? And are they the most talented? Yeah, I, I think they're the most talented team. I'm not sure they're the team that fits the best. Yeah. Um, but they put themselves in a position now. They got, they got four games with Cleveland, six against Minnesota. They're going to control their own destiny. The only other weird, they have a weird trip to San Diego late in the year play three games and then come back. I mean, Lauren, I mean, I don't think this is a, this is an 84 win division type, mm. you know, and I think they all right. Them. But he says, you say fits the best, I mean, chemistry. I don't want to say chemistry, like they have talent, but they have a lot of guys that play out of position, you know, guys that should be playing first base or DH or playing corner positions in the outfield. But they have talent because they, you know, they can hit and they can hit the ball out of the ballpark and Lynn is starting to throw the ball really well right now and Cease is a, is a beast, so sure. Johnny Cueto. Yesterday yeah, was a perfect too. example. Aloy Jimenez stepping up with a big game. Yeah. Gavin Sheets has swung the bat. Andrew Vaughn swung the See, bat. That's the issue, though. They all should be either playing first base or DH. That's yeah. that's the issue. When I, I just don't dead. feel like Minnesota or Cleveland can make a move away from them. I agree completely. But they're already in front of them. Yeah, but it's only game, two games. Yeah. Two. Hey, real quick. One the night. Twins and Guardians will play each other eight times over the next 13 games, and the White Sox. You know, they got Detroit. Schedule, and bleh, Oakland, yeah. I get it, but there are some winnable games. Yes. At looking at their schedule. I love this time of year because we get to see what's coming next in the game. The Rangers promoting Josh Young, the eighth overall pick in 2019. The shoulder injury kept him from debuting mm. before now. What kind of player are we looking at, Dan? I got a Ryan Zimmerman comp on him. I mean, it's uh, there's power to all fields. He's got a feel for the strike zone. He's a strong, physical kid. Stays inside the ball well. I mean, this is an incredibly important part of their rebuild because it's really the only one position player that you can look at. They've got some arms coming, but this is kind of the one aircraft carrier they've got coming through the system, number one draft pick. So he's a really important part of their future. Well, you could start to imagine, right? Him at third, Corey at short, Simeon at second, Nathaniel, Nathaniel at Lowe. first. There's your infield. They're going to spend a little bit more money, I would think, this, this well, offseason. I trust CY. Get him up there. He's he's pounded in the minor leagues. Let's see. He would have been here do. sooner than this. He had that yeah, he's uh, had terrible, unfortunate shoulder injury right before the start of the season. So he's a good-looking kid. Really er, earlier in the show, we mentioned the Wanda Franco news that he could be reinstated as soon as tomorrow with the Tampa Bay Rays. Well, more reinforcements could be coming. Tyler Glass now had a rehab start a couple of nights ago. One inning, two strikeouts at Triple A Durham. Uh, Dan, how would you proceed here? With, with Tyler Glass now? I don't think you map anything out. He threw 19 pitches, 11 strikes, had 96 to 98. He was electric. I think you just now see how he feels. You don't, you, you, you map things out, but you go on how he feels. Yeah. But I mean, think about this rotation with, if McClanahan gets back and Rasmussen, you have Kluber. I mean, now you, you got, got problems. Some, you got some dudes, man. They really start matching up well. In, in and Wander Franco comes back. I Listen. think that's huge for him, Mark. Huge. I really do. I think he's like that one guy that can just carry you for a long time. I remember in 2010 with the Giants, it was such a struggle for the offense to score runs that it kind of like, it was in the room. And when I watch Tampa, it's the same thing. They win one nothing last night. That's a good way night. to put it. It's in the room. That's a good it, way to put it. You start to understand as an offense, man, we're letting our pitching staff down. we got to find a way to scratch three across. Uh, across. And when you see... What do you this, mean in the I don't understand what, the, what you mean by that. The you start there. to feel guilty. Mm. Okay. You're in the hitters meeting going, how do we take... Not every pitch for Tim Lincecum has got to be so stressful or Matt Cain. Uh, I got it's like, it. I feel like. So if Franco does that for them, exactly. like, he takes the pressure. He's and getting low back, if Lowe can get going at second base. Yeah. I tell you, if the Yankees didn't win that game on Sunday, oh. I'm a firm believer. That was, that was a two-game swing. It was. I think they Could catch him. down the three. I don't know if they catch him now, but I think they catch him. Yeah. So Glass now looking good last night. Absolutely.